And Aisha, we have new numbers from CBP sources as the migrant surge continues at the southern border. Since October 1st, when the new fiscal year began, there have been nearly 475,000 migrant encounters from over 130 countries and just over 60,000 known gotaways. That's a thousand a day. Independent border journalist Auden Cabello joins me now to discuss more on the crisis at the southern border. Auden, you live in Mexico. You are a dual citizen. You spend time with us in Eagle Pass. You shoot amazing footage of those trains carrying hundreds of migrants on top. You talk to the migrants and you interviewed a gentleman at the shelter in Del Rio yesterday with a remarkable detail. I want our viewers to listen and then have you talk to it on the other side. Watch this. Yo, cuando venía caminando, después que nos bajaron del tren, llegaron esos muchachos que se identificaron como de migración y entonces nos dieron unas coordenadas cómo llegar al refugio, al refugio de las monjas. Y entonces, ahí cruzando al río, ahí nos cobraron ellos mismos, nos cobraban para poder... Les cobraban? Nos, les cobraban 100 pesos, 500 pesos, depende de lo que le dieran a las personas, les quitaban. Tell me about that interview, Auden, and why it's so striking. Well, it's great to be with you, Griff. And um, it, that, that's very striking because one of the things that I've been documenting in Piedras Negras is the uh, continuous flow of migrants arriving. And after covering it for so long, it, it seems that there was something orchestrated or somewhat organized. So I started digging a little bit deeper and I started talking to the migrants and eventually they opened up saying that they're being received, receiving GPS coordinates. Uh, so I uh, pushed further, trying to find out, well, who's providing these coordinates? Who's, who's organizing these, these groups? Uh, and um, this gentleman in particular from yesterday, uh, he said it's immigration officials that approached him on the train. Now, these trains that I've been documenting uh, leaving central Mexico, they're the same ones arriving in Piedras Negras. And what Mexican officials are doing now is they're stopping the train, having the migrants get off, and gradually releasing them uh, so they, they don't arrive all at once to Piedras Negras, like we've seen previously, where we've seen thousands uh, arrive all at once. Those have uh, simply um, gone away from uh, Mexican officials and made it all the way to the river. So now that they're controlling it, uh, they, they approach them 100 miles uh, further into Mexico, and uh, they get them off the train, they provide GPS coordinates to a shelter, the only shelter in Piedras Negras. And then from there, they go and give them further instructions on where and when to cross into Eagle Pass. Now we've seen, uh, there's footage of where these large groups uh, were crossing. At some point, uh, Border Patrol was waiting for them and used a forklift to raise the Constantino wire and let them through. And these are the same groups that I've been walking with and documenting as, as they're crossing into Eco Pass. And what I'm seeing is that not only is it very organized and orchestrated, is that the flow continues. And uh, from what I'm seeing, uh, there's no end in sight. Wow. Uh, two days ago, two days ago, I got word that there's 1,600 uh, in Sabinas, which is 80 miles south of Piedras Negras. Well, I've been waiting and monitoring for this group, and uh, sure enough, they're, they're, they're applying the same approach as only uh, 200, 300 at a time being released, being guided to the uh, shelter, and then from there guided to uh, a certain crossing point at certain times. And these are the groups that wow. you and your team uh, have, been, have been documenting on the Eagle Pass side. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable, Auden, what you're explaining here, and you and I, uh, and Bill Malusian, and you, we've stood on the bank of the Rio Grande and Eagle Pass and watched the Mexican immigration officials smoking cigarettes, not doing much to stop them from coming across. And we know sometimes Mexico, Mexican government does help uh, the U.S., and other times it seems to be slow to respond. But this is a different level to organize to receive trains, to give migrants coordinates to a Mexican shelter right across from the crossing, and then, as that gentleman said, actually charge them a fee. It's almost as if the Mexican immigration officials, Auden, are the cartel themselves. It's like if the cops in the U.S. held the door to a bank open for bank robbers. 
That's a great point. Uh, I know we often talk about the cartels making a lot of money off of this, but in the state of Coahuila, where there, there is no open cartel operating, um, it's the corruption uh, and the uh, government officials who are operating as a cartel. And, and, and I think this is one thing that uh, U.S. policymakers should take into account, is that it's not only cartels, it's also Mexican officials and the corruption that's driving these large numbers into the United States. And Auden, I've just got about 30 seconds left, but what do you say to Chief Jason Owens, DHS Secretary Mayorkas? What do they need to know? What's the key thing for them if you were advising them? Well, I think right now the the pull factors uh, are outweighing the push factors for these migrants. We talk about the push factors out of their countries, for example, poverty, crime, uh, tyrant governments, and they're being pushed out of the countries. But not right now, what's outweighing is the pull factors into the United States. I think uh, the solution is regional. These pull factors should be in other countries where where they can uh, these refugees can find a uh, safe haven and not not only in the United States where they're all driving themselves you know into whether it's on train uh, you know walking bus however it may be I think uh, reverse the whole process of the push and pull factors that's great advice. Auden Cabello, independent journalist working in Mexico to bring us these images and bring us the story you will see nowhere else other than here. Auden Cabello, thank you very much for taking time and keep up the great work. Yes, sir. My pleasure.